from Newfoundland and I was raised a Catholic in St. John's. When I was 15 years old, a new priest came to our parish. He was younger than the older fellas we were used to. Very charismatic and he quickly became very popular. And every Friday, we were strongly encouraged to go to confession. And one Friday, I found myself going to the right of the church and I ended up in his box. And as I was confessing my 15-year-old sins, he stopped me, he interrupted me, and he asked me my name, he asked me if I played any sports, what I was reading, what my dad did for a living, where I lived. And then he asked if he could talk to me after the confession. Now in retrospect, that's a bit of a red flag because confession is supposed to be an anonymous exchange. But I was just 15. Instead of being careful or cautious, I just felt special. And I remember going home and I told my parents I'd met the new priest. We had a conversation. And they, uh, they said, you should invite him up for supper. And I did. And he came up about a week later for supper. And we all felt special. And then he became like one of the family. He endeared himself to us all. We gave him a key to the house and he could come and go as he pleased. Before the year was over, he asked if he could take me to Rome. He said, I, I could go to Rome and I could meet the Pope. And I begged my parents to let me go and they said if I could work hard enough to raise the money for the plane ticket, they'd give me the rest. So we got to go. And on that trip, he poured me my first drink, bought me my first cigarettes. And he began to sexually abuse me. And I felt betrayed and ashamed angry but I didn't know who to tell and I kept that secret buried in alcohol for 30 years until I finally faced my truth with this song oh me mother I met my match show me a fam no strings attached Hold me mother Cause I'm out of control So tell me a story That I need to know I am a singer In search of a song To do what is right And to right what was wrong out here in the open, there's nowhere to hide. So strap yourselves in, let's go for a ride.
protection There's cracks in these walls upon closer inspection cross Thank you for listening. A secret, a secret can kill you. A secret can kill you, but a song, a song can save your life. And there's only one way to defeat a secret. And that's the reason I'm here tonight. The way to defeat a secret is to tell it. Music is my medicine. And when things were too difficult to deal with and too difficult to say, it was a song that let me say it. My love of music and my love of whiskey combined in my life and ended up, we ended up forming Canada's biggest party band. It's, it's not the hip, it's Great Big C. And we worked really hard at what we did. Our job was a difficult job, and we took it seriously. And I'm here to tell you that it was not an act. It was not an act. And every night for us, whether it was Tuesday in Saskatoon or Wednesday in Winnipeg, every single night for us was Saturday night. And every day I went to work, on my desk, there was a bottle of whiskey or rum, four bottles of wine, two white, two red, 48 beer every day. And you know what? For an, al for an alcoholic who was hiding from the truth, I felt like I won the lottery. And that's where I lived, hidden in plain view for 20 years. And everything seemed to go well until I hit my 40s. And I started to have blackouts. Started to lose control. I almost lost everything. People always ask me how I finally quit, given the lifestyle I was in. And uh, the truth is, like many alcoholics before me, I embraced my higher power. Her name is Andrea, and she's my wife. She loved me. She loved me enough to give me the ultimatum I needed to hear. And on November 9th, 2011, I put the bottle down. And you know, it wasn't all very easy. There were some serious side effects to sobriety, the first being that I lost every friend I ever had. The phone stopped ringing. I was alone. And of course, the second thing was that after about three months, I started to have nightmares. I started to remember what the priest did to me and why I started drinking in the first place. 
and I felt very vulnerable and I really wanted a drink and I actually went out and I bought a bottle of whiskey, Wagavulin, I believe, and I brought it home. And I laid it on the counter. And I knew what the consequence would be if I opened that bottle. And I stared at that bottle for a long time. And as I was looking at the bottle, though, another shape came, to, came into my vision, my peripheral vision. And it was a guitar. It was this guitar. It was hung on a wall. And this is old Brown. This is the first guitar I ever bought. And he's been with me ever since. He was the friend who never left. And that day, as I stared at that bottle, I started to see in him an option. And I went over and I picked him off the wall where he was hanging on his, on his stand. And I started to strum. I started to feel better. And you know what? That bottle never got open and it never will. I did the last tour on the bus sober. You know what, for a long time I thought I'd never sing another great big sea song. Things ended a little angry. And I'll take one third of the blame for that. One day I found myself at a small Newfoundland festival, walking around with old brown in my arms trying to learn some Johnny Cash songs and Bob Marley songs because I was determined not to sing any great big sea songs. And I encountered this woman who was crawling around on her arms, hands and knees, in the tall grass behind the stage. And I walked over her and I said, are you okay? And she said, yeah, I'm fine. I'm just looking for four leaf clovers. And she got up and she looked me right in the eye and she said, I know who you are, you're Sean McCann and I came here to tell you something. You should never give up. Just like that. And then she went on, she said, my name is Annalise Boyer and I'm from Ferguson, Ontario and I'm a huge, great big C fan. Been to about 30 of your concerts. Ten years ago, I was hit by a drunk driver, and I have a brain injury, which is why I speak so directly. But I haven't been to come to any of your shows, because my brain injury causes me to have seizures around bright lights and volume and big crowds. But I thought maybe in this little festival, if I drove here, maybe, just maybe, I'd get to hear you sing some great big sea songs. Are you going to sing any great big sea songs tonight, Sean? <laughs> I got a smile on my face and I got four walls around me. I got the sun in the sky, the water surround me. Oh, you know, I might win some. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the four-leaf clover she picked for me behind the stage that day. And I wear it to remind me of the huge lesson that she taught me that day. And that is that anger is always the enemy. It never wants to help or heal. It only wants to hurt. And there's exactly one antidote to anger. And that's love. In this beautiful life, there's always some 
sing another song with you but I got to get closer to you and I got 29 seconds <laughs> help me out you know I love Stop. <laughs> I climb the mountains. I go. 